They sell salmon without a head. I hate this. How much about the length? It's about uh, nine six. Okay. So when you're dealing with salmon, this is a dressed salmon head off. Usually we'll buy them dressed. Dressed means guts, gills out. Okay. Usually that's what it means. Okay. So this is about a nine and a half pound salmon. It would have been about a ten pound salmon with the head on. Okay. So the salmon, when I'm looking at it, it should have firm flesh. It shouldn't be, once you push it in, it shouldn't have indentations. Also, when you see the gill, it should be bright, and the eye should be relatively clear. Okay? Well, the salmon will last a lot longer if you take the guts out. So they already made a slit from here all the way back, and they took all the innards out. Okay? Now, what do we want to do with the salmon? What do you typically want to do with a whole fish? Filet. It all depends on what you want to use it for. If it's big, you want to fillet it. If it's small, you want to fry it whole or steam it whole. Okay? So a couple things you can do. They've already taken the scales off of it. Okay? I want to fillet it off the bone and skin it. And then what I want to use it for is a rotary lunch. We'll give them a three ounce portion. All the same size. But first, what I want to do is I want to brine it a little bit, cure it with salt and sugar, and then I want to slightly smoke it. Smoked salmon is really, really tasty, and it imparts another dimension of flavor. Another layer, another layer of flavor. Okay? And we have some fresh dill. Right? We got some fresh dill that goes well with the salmon. Okay, you guys can hold off for a second there, unless you got a tremendous amount. That way we can hear what we're talking about too. Okay. So I'll show you the mixture. It's basically 50-50, and I usually do a rub. The other thing you can do is you can do a brine, which means you dilute the sugar and salt in warm water. You let it cool down, and you submerge the fillets in that water for up to 30 minutes. What I like to do is I like to just season it and do a dry rub and not take that seasoning off. Okay, And then we will smoke it very gently, very lightly. I've got a tabletop smoker that I want to introduce you to. So what we're doing, when we do the salmon, we've got to need a couple of things. And does anybody have a pair of pliers? We've got to get mine. I'll get them later on, and I'll pull the pin bones off later. It's not that big of a deal. But I usually have a pair of um, uh, pliers that pull out these pin bones that line around here. So, how do you bone it out? This is a round fish. Okay? Round meaning it's round shaped. The other fish categorized as flat fish, right? This could potentially be on a final examination, but it's up to you if you want to take notes or not. Okay? I strongly suggest that, because I will ask the same kind of questions that I asked in our quiz relating to your lab questions, relating to your lab assignments, relating to your lab lectures, okay? So this is a round fish. The categories are generally four different ones. There's round and flat. Name a flat fish, anybody? Akule. Halibut. So. Akule. Akule. Is that a round fish or flat. a flat fish? Is flat. that? Okay. What else do you have? So. Flounder, sole, sand dabs. These are flat fish. You see a lot of them in Hawaii if you go skin diving near the beach. Then there's also fatty fish and lean fish. Okay. This is a fatty fish. It has a high fat content. What's a lean fish? Ahi. Ahi would be. Marlin? Marlin could be, yep. Swordfish. Swordfish. Okay. Another fatty fish would be bass or um, um, cod. There's some cods that are very fatty. Catfish would be a lean fish. And that would be also a freshwater fish as opposed to a saltwater fish. Okay? You want to be aware of the different kinds of categories that fish are so that you can have a better idea of how to use it and how to cure it how to cook it, okay? So the way to handle fish is usually by the gill or by the tail or both, okay? You never want to grab it and turn it over. It's going to leave little dimples in the skin and you're going to bruise it. And you paid $100 for this thing, okay? So we're going to have to figure out how many portions it equates to and how much it costs. It's not a cheap fish. $9.50 a pound what I saw, okay? 
So I want to treat it with a lot of respect and care, and that's why I put it in ice. You don't want to just leave it. The typical way that I butcher salmon is always in steps. It's always in steps. The first step is I put the head toward my right and the belly toward you. That's what I usually do. Okay? So again, head to my right, belly towards you. I'll take a nice sharp knife if I have it. And what I'm going to do, the first incision is going to go toward these gills, right? And if you look at the skeletal structure, you've got this collar, okay? And then you're going to cut it this way and cut against the bone all the way until you release the fillet all the way. <clears throat> For butcher shops, you have big, long cutting boards that support the fish as opposed to something that comes off the edge. <clears throat> also, I like to have a dry towel so I can hold the fish and protect my hand just in case I slip, okay? So I'm going to do it. And I'll do the other side. I'm going to do the first side fast. The second side, I'm going to go and slow down. All right, so you can see. Okay? So you also want to have a cutting board that's rather secure. So I pull the, pull the fin off, and I make the first cut right toward here. Okay? Usually, if I have the bone, I have something to hold on to. Okay? Then, you can see, I'm going to pull my knife back. So you just have that narrow tip that's going to help me start it. So I'm going to go cut in. Okay? And I'll lift the belly the whole time. Okay? Any time that I don't I get stuck, I stop, slow down, and lift it up. At this point, I'm gonna look and make sure I'm against the spine. You see that right there? Let me pull this towel up so you have a better idea. Okay? So I'll lift it because it's a slimy product. And at this point, <clears throat> I'll lift this belly with my hand, and I'm going to cut toward myself, but not cut in toward me, cut to the side. Okay, I, only, I don't want to cover my blade up either when I'm holding this towel. I want to see where I'm cutting. Okay? Now, if you work in a restaurant or a hotel that does a lot of fresh fish, you might have the opportunity to do some butchering. Otherwise, you can volunteer, and maybe they'll let you do some butchering if you're a student. Or if you work on a boat and you do a lot of salmon or any other fish, you can practice. Or you can do it on your own. You see what I just did? When I cut, I just made sure that I'm not going to just go cutting wildly. I cut with control. I didn't just cut like that. Okay? When I have the fillet, this is when it's going to show you whether you cut near the bone or not. And what, again, what you want to do is you want to support the fillet and flip it over in one piece. So, you want to support it and then flip it over, okay? So that is what we're looking for. You don't have any jagged marks. It's nice and smooth. That's what we're looking for when we're doing that. Is that finished yet? No. We still need to cut all this off and take the bone out here. And then if you feel around here, and later on you can feel it, there's a pin bone. There's about 27 of them here. And tomorrow what I'll do is I'll bring my pliers in and I'll pull the pin bones out.